Thank you everyone for joining us today for Data Theorem's webinar series. Today's topic will address apps, kids, apps, and privacy. Before we get started, we just want to give a little background on Data Theorem. The company was founded in 2013 out of in the heart of Silicon Valley, headquartered in Palo Alto, California, with offices now in Paris and New York. Our leadership team has over 15 years in cybersecurity, has published over six security research books, and led over $4 billion in security acquisitions. That has led us to have a tremendous amount of success and the privilege to work with a number of great customers. As you can see here, we support both our mobile app programs as well as API security programs. Now, before I turn it over to our speaker for today, I just want to make a couple of notes. We will be recording today's session and make it available after the fact. If you can't stay on for the entire time, we will provide it. Then also, we will reserve time at the end of the presentation for Q&A. So if there are any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A panel within the event, and we will make sure to answer those questions at the end of the session, or we'll follow up by email. With that, I'd like to introduce Hamanchu Duveni, the CEO of Data Theorem, who I will we'll be discussing this topic with us today. Thank you, Felicia. Um, I'll just dive right into the presentation. So today's presentation is about kids, privacy, and apps. If you're a parent or an aunt or an uncle or any kind of adult um, in information security, at some point in your professional career, someone had probably came to you and said, hey, can you tell me about this app? Now, corporate security, enterprise security is a different problem point than consumer security. However, we're all expected to be experts in everything once you have that information security title. And there is some overlap. So today we're going to talk about that overlap, how privacy, children, and mobile apps do have a significant attack surface, if you will. Also, that hits the corporate app arena, um, like the uh, large banks and tech companies of the world. So the first thing is to talk about the problem. What are the problems? Now, as a parent, I feel very confident saying this, but kids are the problem, right? Now, they, they want screens, and we don't, we don't blame them. If you look at adults, even older adults, they're always on their screens. In fact, I would argue a lot of adults I know over 65 have a bigger problem in screen time than children, but we always like to target children for, for always uh, making themselves better. So screen time is something that every kid deals with and has a battleground with their parents or their guardian. Um, and of course, apps. There are literally millions of apps out there. You cannot hold a child back when there's a new app that they want to play. In fact, you want to encourage that because uh, it might actually get them to computer science one day. But at the same time, there has to be some kind of balance. Um, and then finally, friends. Like all children um, have a lot of friends or a few friends, but there's always one friend who gets access to everything, right? Uh, that person is a probably great, great person, but the parents allow him or her to download every single app. And usually every single app has every single bell and whistle, and you just don't know what's really happening behind the scenes. It's very difficult, if not extremely opaque, for parents or guardians to understand what an app is doing on the surface level compared to what it's doing on the, uh, underneath the uh, code itself. And that goes to my second point is safety. So the first part is, you know, we're kind of kidding around with children being the problem, but really it's a serious discussion. Safety of children online is nothing that you probably need to hear from us first. COPA um, is a big part of that, but the location of these children is accessible via your mobile apps, full stop. That's a statement. The pictures on your, on your child's device is also accessible to these mobile apps. That's also just a factual statement. And then many times to use these apps, they do require you to sign up with your email, your age, and your address. Um, me being in information security for a very long time, I was surprised I had to tell my children that when you sign up for anything, first of all, you're not allowed to sign up for anything, but again, they're children, they do it anyway. But when you sign up for anything, don't ever give your real information, right? I have never really given my real information online, and that's turned out to be pretty well. However, when you say that to a 10 or 12-year-old, then, then they turn around and say, hey, Dad, wait a second, how will my friends find me on this app if I have fake information? And there you have the parent problem. That's a very good point. If we constantly put in fake information, but they actually want to be coincided or at least linked to their real friends, 
but uh, invisible to people they don't know. That's not a problem that has been solved today. So it's a really tough balancing act in terms of getting use out of the app versus trying to be anonymous on the app. So it's a very serious uh, situation because, again, location, pictures, and personal info, what other data scares you to death in terms of your children and someone having access to this? Now, I do want to make sure um, we spend time on the positive first. Probably 80 to 90% of the users of whatever your app, or whatever app your children, your niece or nephew are using is just fine. There's a lot of good people out there using apps legitimately. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually steal a uh, screenshot from a popular TV show on HBO called Silicon Valley. Um, and this is a this is a uh, episode they did on um, uh, Copa. Essentially, the startup actually got a millions and millions of users in a short amount of time. And as they dug deep, um, they tried to figure out who were these users and what were they doing in the app. Well, unfortunately, in this uh, in this screenshot, you see the users are all uh, um, all girls under the age of 18. Uh, so I think most of them look like they're 12 or something like that. And of course, we have one person circled who is definitely not under the age of 18 and also not a female. So while this is an extreme exaggeration of the problem, this is a very serious problem and this does happen. Now, I don't want to say every single app that's out there has this problem. That is not what we're trying to say because most of them are doing very good things. But the potential for this to happen is real. Otherwise, it wouldn't have shown up in an HBO show because sadly, um, the abuse of technology or accessing something when there's not really strong laws in place is what predators do. Um, that's not something like we're uh, proud to know about, but we do see it all the time. So there, it's not just my child spends too much time on Candy Crush. Um, that's, a, that's a different problem. But hey, my child is spending time on an app that is social networking, but the security controls or privacy controls this app has are not there. And it's not there because they're not trying to be malicious, because if they have that friction, do you think any of these children in this, uh, in this uh, screenshot would sign up quickly if it took their parental consent to do that? or it took them like 14 questions to prove that they were 18 and not 12, they wouldn't have the boost in users if they had all this friction. So it's, that's why you see a lot of privacy, privacy limitations, um, and that's where the predators come in. All right, so how do we solve this problem? Like, uh, uh, what can we do about it? So Data Theorem actually has a free service. Um, we're, we're not all parents here. Um, some of them are young adults, but either way, we want to make sure that the apps you use in your enterprise, your banking apps, your tech apps, secure by our technology. But we also want to make sure the apps you use at home, your personal use, uh, but that might not have any security program behind it, are also safe. So that's something you can use for free at any time. So you can download our Am I Safe app um, off the uh, Google Play Store. And essentially, search for the apps that your children are using. Um, I do this all the time. So if your child comes to you um, and say, hey, I want to use this app, uh, pull up Am I Safe, type in the name of the app, hit search, and what we will show you is if the app has defensive um, coding in place, proactive security in place, and then proactive privacy in place. Is this app being proactive in terms of security? And the reason why we show positive proactive metrics is that to us relates into a security program. So if there is a security program behind the app, which means it's probably expensive, security is not cheap, that means someone in the organization is thinking about security. Um, and if they're thinking about security, you probably have the right app. If it's 50% or below, then there's probably not a security program in place. No one's really thinking about it. They're reactive. Um, if they're reactive, that means someone is not actively thinking about how do we protect our children on these apps. Um, and if it's not a child's app, no big deal. But if it is, it's something you probably want to think twice about um, if you want to give your son or daughter, niece or nephew access to such a thing. Okay. So, so another proactive thing you can do right now, um, everyone probably knows about this who's attending this webinar, are your privacy settings. Go to your settings and privacy, and these are all the different things that you can essentially see which apps have that data on your, on your phone or your child's phone, and which apps are at least trying to access such data. It starts from location to contact, so on and so forth. Now, here's a tactical thing. If you're following along now and you have an iPhone, pull it out right now. 
go to settings, go to privacy, and do me a favor. This is something that's kind of lesser known. When you go to um, privacy, there's going to be an advertising section where you can limit ad tracking. You should turn that on now. Essentially, that says your, your device will now be sending a response to the app saying, do not track me. Now, there's an honor system. Unfortunately, there's an honor system. They can ignore it. But if they ignore it and Apple catches them ignoring it, they will be booted off the App Store. But if you enable uh, limit ad tracking, basically you're telling the app, I do not want you to track me, which is a very good first step. If you're doing it on your phone now, definitely do it on your, on your child's or your uh, niece or nephew's phone as well. Second thing I want you to do right now is click on Reset Advertising Identifier. Do that right now. So what is that doing is anyone who is tracking you, uh, any app that is tracking your device, you're resetting that identifier at this moment. So now there's a new ID for your phone that has nothing to do with your old ID. So it will, it will make it very hard for them to track you across apps and across networks. So you just look like a brand new person or your device looks like a brand new person when you hit reset advertiser identifier. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you to do this on a weekly basis, monthly basis. You're probably saying, wait, 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 can't you just do this automatically? And yes, we would love to, but the good folks in Cupertino do not allow us to do this. So we know Apple takes Apple, I'm sorry, takes privacy seriously. They tell us that all the time. In many ways they do, but I wish they would walk the walk in some more aspects and make this a little bit more automated so I could reset my identifier on a daily basis automatically and not manually. But anyway, do it manually um, and you'll be less and less tracked across your mobile apps um, within, your, uh, within your device. Now, here's a bonus for adults. Um, the other thing that is off by default that I want you to turn on now is go to your news app. Um, the news app is on by default, so even if you don't use the Apple News, when you left swipe off the main menu, all those articles come up. And there is a setting at the, near the bottom that says restrict stories in today. I want you to turn that on right now. What that is doing is it's only going to show you news articles based on what you opted into, not what Apple wants to show you. There's a big difference, right? So by default, Apple is going to show you what people are selling them, to them to show you. And you can shut that off by default and only see stories that you want to see yourself. So these are the, some of the tips and tricks in terms of security and privacy you can do now to help solve this problem for, again, um, younger individuals who might not know all the details of how to secure their device um, and make it more private than um, the default settings. All right, so now let's get into the app. So I took a very quick uh, inventory of some of the more popular apps for people who are under the age of 18 and below. Um, some of these apps are popular to the people who are older than 18. Um, but let's go into some of them and, uh, and, and kind of see how they're doing. So what I'm going to do now is switch to um, our product. Um, and as I said earlier, we have a search um, feature in our product where you can search for any app on the App Store itself. Um, and you can see in terms of proactive security what it's doing now. And it's free for anyone to use. So I'm going to start with um, Facebook uh, Messenger uh, for kids. Um, you know what? I just got logged out as a security control. So let me log back in. Um, and the reason why I bring up Facebook Messenger first, um, because Facebook is always and will always be in the news in terms of um, security and privacy. Um, and so when you click on the details, um, you will see that Facebook Messenger Kids actually has a security posture of 50% or more. That's a very good thing, right? Um, so Facebook gets a lot of negative attention in terms of its privacy. Some of it is rightfully so. I'm not here to say that they're innocent. But what is not talked about enough is Facebook is a billion-dollar company with a hundred or so million-dollar privacy budget. And all these things that you see here is not by accident. Someone in uh, or some group in Facebook takes uh, privacy seriously, and they are actively building in security in their product. Otherwise, you would see a number like five or seven percent, and not fifty percent. So even though Messenger Kids is uh, or it's from Facebook, 
I would say, you know what, this is clear to me they're thinking about security and privacy. I'm okay with this app. Is it perfect? No, it's not close to being perfect. But is there a security program and privacy program behind this app? Yes, I can tell that here because you don't do 52% um, of good security and privacy things by accident. You have to want to do that. And to dig a little bit deeper, if you're, if you're a developer on the phone, um, you can see how many third-party components that this app has. This is just a, a fancier way of saying how many possible analytics SDKs or advertising SDKs are in this app. So these are all data that could be shared with the uh, app's ecosystem for monetization. So we went back earlier to like location, photos, things like that. So possibly if this app is asking for location, um, and you can see it is not. That's pretty impressive. It's asking for the camera, the microphone, and the photo library. It's not asking for location. So that actually made me feel better that, hey, if these 17 third-party components are trying to sell to young children based on where they're located, it's not going to work here uh, because this app does not request location. Now, let's take another example from the slide, uh, which was, I think, TikTok. Uh, a conversation in my personal household uh, quite quite often. Um, so you just type in TikTok, and let's look at iOS just to make sure. So 5%. So you, you see the difference that this is an app uh, that is doing proactive security and privacy in terms of 5% of what they could be doing. Um, for me, as a information security professional doesn't meet my bar. My bar is 50%. For you, it could be a lot lower. Maybe it's a lot higher. If you work for the NSA, you may be probably at 90%. Um, you know, if you work for Disney, maybe you're 10%. I don't know. But the point is that um, this is very low uh, to me, and, and this is something that I would say, no, this is not acceptable for our families, uh, for our families um, use cases. And then you can go to, again, the security part, and notice that TikTok is actually taking the location. Um, and when you look at the uh, third-party components, you see 46 um, different components where location can be shared. So this to me is just off the charts unacceptable. 5% protected, taking my child's location and potentially sharing it with 46 different components. Um, this is a non-starter. So obviously it's a very extreme example, but this is how you can use our search button or just kind of take this problem more practically. Now, Again, it is opaque for parents and guardians. It is not easy, but this is how you need to approach the problem. Like, okay, is there a security and privacy program behind this organization? Are they taking location and photos, um, yes or no? And sometimes they need to do that for the app to function. But then finally, how many different sources, it, sources can it be shared with? In this case, it's 46, not 17 like Messenger. So that's where you just have to question the process a little bit and maybe pass on an app like this versus confirming on, on a different app that your child might be wanting to use. All right. With that, I'll skip back into the slides. So that's essentially all I wanted to cover. So in short, um, there are tools, free tools out there for you to see which apps are safe or safer in terms of privacy. Um, it is still a very difficult process. Eva, iOS and Android don't make it easy for you to basically de-anonymize yourself on an automated basis, but there's tools you can do on your iPhone, on your Android phone, and just using our search engine itself to make your decision a little bit more clear when, when you're allowing an app to be used by your child or maybe passing on it saying it's just not the right thing uh, at this point in your life. With that, Felicia, I'll hand it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Manchu. Uh, definitely be having some difficult discussions with my teen and preteen and blaming you tonight. <laughs> so we do have a couple of questions. Uh, let me give you the first one. And for anyone else, go ahead and submit your questions now. So uh, as an app designer, can I make sure that how can I make sure that users can keep their data private? That's a great question. So the uh, the biggest point I would say is going back to these SDKs. As an app designer, um, you know that an app um, is made of a third-party component. It's a very, very normal thing. The thing is you have to make sure you know what data they're pulling because it's a monetization model using freemium. So they're giving you analytics. They're giving you advertising. 
Uh, they might even be giving you some features, and in exchange, they're not asking for money. They're asking for your data. Your data is more valuable to them than any money you could provide, especially if you have thousands, hundred thousands, millions of downloads. So the key thing is you have to double down on those data points and make sure you scan those apps, to be quite honest, and see what data they're pulling from your device. This could be a financial app, a banking app, or it could be a social networking app. But just like everyone, when you invite someone to your home and they're part of your ecosystem, you just want to make sure what they're taking in their jackets as they leave your home. And it should be pretty empty or it should be the leftover, but not like um, your grandmother's china. So it's, the point is, is that you just have to trust but verify. And the verify part is a big part of our solution. Our SDK analyzer basically doubles down on saying, okay, this analytics SDK claims to take no sense of information. And we have verified that on every release that the information they're pulling from the app is non-PII, non-location, and of course, no photos. So it's just basically ensuring that you scan those components as well. Okay, so next question. I really like the tips you shared for iPhones. Is there anything else we can do with our privacy settings? Yeah, great question. There's a, uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, there's a lot you can do manually. So this is my, unfortunately, my, my nighttime routine. I'm not saying you have to do it every night, but every night I go into settings, privacy, and I just make sure um, when, you, when you click on this, um, go ahead and tap on either locations or contacts, and you can see which apps right now have access to those. Now, I wish there's a way I could just say, hey, I could do this all at once, and then any other apps is just denied, like almost like a privacy firewall. But again, the good people in Cupertino don't allow us to do that yet. But so you have to go through each one. But what I do every night, I go to location and I go to photos and I want to say who has access to my photos and who has access to my location. And if, if it's who I expect it to be, um, then everything's fine. If there's any app in there that I don't expect it to be, I pull them out. Um, so unfortunately or fortunately, there are ways you can do it. It is manual, but you should have a regular cadence to look at your privacy settings and go in there and motion and fitness on the bottom of the screen, my RunKeeper app should have that, no problem. But all of a sudden, if I see that, hey, um, my, uh, my sports app has access to my photos or my microphone, that's really odd. I don't talk to my sports app. I get scores, right? So that's where I would say, nope, I don't know what feature they need this for, but I'm turning it off. So that's what I would do, maybe not nightly, but weekly or monthly uh, to make sure the apps on your device are taking data that you're comfortable with, and that's it. Okay, great. That's all the questions we have. Before we close, I just wanted to let everybody know if you're interested in exploring app security further with us or have any remaining questions, you, know, you can go to datatherum.com slash demo, and we'd be happy to set up time to speak with you. Um, and with that, thank you for your presentation today, and thank you everyone else for taking the time to join. Thanks, everyone.